Good morning and welcome to Island Adventures. Where are we at today, babe? Well, we are still in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. If you haven't seen our last video, make sure you go back and watch that one first or this won't make sense. So we are at the Gettysburg National Museum and Visitor Center. Um, this time we're actually going to go into the museum and check it out. Right. Um, probably figure out how to do the battlefields, check out the little actual town in Gettysburg, maybe get some food. So let's just see what we see. All right, let's go. All right, we're back to the Visitor Center. We're gonna go in, check it out, and go in the museum. Yep, we've already been to the Visitor Center. If you watched our last video, you would know that. So let's go check out the museum. Okay, we're gonna head into the museum. There's also a film you can watch that they recommend. We chose not to do it. We're just gonna look at the museum. There's a museum right over there. What'd you say? There's artifacts outside the museum too. It looks like like buttons and belt plates and guns and stuff along this wall. So the museum has different stages. It's kind of like when the country was first formed till towards war, and then I'm guessing we're going to get more into war. Here's a map of the U.S. in 1860. Shows the green were the free states that didn't have slavery, and all the red were the states where they had slavery, and then the west was kind of that neutral potential slave or free. They weren't sure yet. This shows the candidates in the 1860 presidential election. Abraham Lincoln, Stephen Douglas, John Brickenridge, and John Bell. Obviously we know Abraham Lincoln won. Here's some cannonballs that they used during the war. They were found at Fort Sumter, the first one. Now we're entering the Nation is at War section. The lights are a little dim in here, so it may be hard to see. It's very dark. It's dark in here. a replica of the Emancipation Proclamation. Abraham Lincoln actually did sign it in the bottom right. It was a gift for someone. The 
role of cavalry. Cavalry, infantry, and artillery were the three main branches of Civil War Army. Cavalry regiments were divided into smaller units called troops, and cavalry men were known as troopers. The first responsibility of the cavalry was to scout and screen, find the enemy, report their location, and prevent their cavalry from doing the same. The more glamorous jobs were less frequent. Reading supply lines, cutting communications, burning bridges and railroads, or charging full tilt into the enemy's troopers. This is an enlisted man's camp. They had to carry all their belongings on their back during the long marches between battles. Think you can play that today? Um, I cannot. I can't play anything though. So, look, they have like medicines too. It's amazing anyone survived back then. Honestly, they do. They got quinine for every ailment. Sometimes it worked. They had a lice comb. Ew. So you would you wouldn't have done well in this time. <laughs> I definitely would not have done well. Now we are met on a great battlefield of that war. And what great battlefield was that? Gettysburg. Gettysburg. Now we're to the Gettysburg section finally. You want to take this fall back to me for its first defensive on Harris Ridge. The line holds briefly as Confederate General Heath. During a lull in the fighting, both armies break up. The Confederates. What are you learning about the first shot? The person who you took the first shot, it was Lieutenant Marcellus Jones of the 8th so Illinois Cavalry. At 3.30 p.m., the Union right flank buckles, and the line begins to cave in right to left. In the streets, Here's one of the cannons General that were used. Great heat. At 3.30 p.m., the Union so along the walls and the exhibits, it actually says like the first shot was July 1st at 7.30 a.m. And then it's like July 1st at 4 p.m., you know, July 2nd at 10 a.m. It kind of shows you what, what went on over those three days of the Battle of Gettysburg. For example, July 2nd at 10 a.m., they show Lee's dilemma. He had to decide whether to attack or not. He didn't really know how big the Union Army was at that point, and he just decided to attack. An hour-long duel silences Ewell's guns. Around 7 p.m., he launches infantry assaults on a So they even have, like, maps of the battle and where the soldiers were and stuff. So if you're into the Civil War, this is a really cool place to go. There's also several screens with films running all the time that you can stop and watch and get a lot more information. In the next few days, the Confederate Army retreats to Virginia with the Union Army in cautious pursuit. The threat to Pennsylvania is over. The brave men living and dead. So this room shows the aftermath of the battle, who came next, how they dealt with the wounded, that kind of thing.
All right, this shows the me battlefield medicine. Let's see what kind of horrors we can find. I mean, a tourniquet, a dirty piece of cloth looks like. Saw so they can amputate what needed to be amputated. Yeah, kind of gross. A lot of Civil War like ID tags they found and just bullets and bones. So obviously there were lots of dead soldiers on the battlefield and it bothered some people. They wanted a proper cemetery. So it looks like within two years they had built a national cemetery here in Gettysburg. There's about 3,500 Union soldiers. We might go see that. We've driven past it a couple times. We might stop there and show that a little bit later. Another fun fact about the cemetery, it was first brought up by David Wills, who was actually the man who had like a house hotel that Lincoln stayed at when he came to do the Gettysburg Address. We might see that later too. Folks, where else are you going to get facts like that except from Valentine's Adventures on YouTube? So make sure you like this video, subscribe so you don't miss the next one, and be sure and share it with all your friends. Valerie has to have her selfie. I mean, a selfie with Lincoln. How often does that happen? Right. How cool is that? And no video is complete without a Valerie selfie. <laughs> they also have a gift shop. I wonder if Valerie's going to buy anything today. She really likes this one. It's kind of cute. It's like the first thing I saw when I walked in. It's kind of nice. Well, do I need a souvenir of a battle where tens of thousands of people die? Maybe, in remembrance. I guess. This is a very big gift shop. Plenty to buy. Find me a hat. I found the hats. I think this is a nice one. You know which one I like? No idea. Take a guess. This one. You should know me. You have chosen poorly. No, because it's, yeah, I don't like that. I like this one. This one? Yep. It's pretty nice. You gonna get it for me? No. I don't like it has the... What, what flag is that? It doesn't matter. It looks like... It's a cool hat. No. Oh no. You what? found the puzzles. No puzzles. I definitely don't need I definitely don't need a puzzle of a battle. That just no puzzles? Grim. No. I found what I need. Abraham Lincoln socks. Really, doesn't everyone need Abraham Lincoln socks? She loves her socks. I do like socks. We found a vacation treat. <laughs> Is this official like Battle of Gettysburg fudge? I'm not sure. But it looks delicious. <laughs> it does look really good. We got a cookies and cream. I got my eye on. Well, since I'm getting the cookies and cream, you're getting a magnet? Yeah, I might as well if I'm standing in line. I'm thinking this one. Well, maybe this one. Mm, I think that one. This one. So, we are done with the museum and gift shop. Where are we going now, Val? So, I have a map of the battlefield sites from the park ranger at the visitor center. And supposedly the app has an audio guide. So, we're going to drive around and see what we can see and show you guys some of it. All right. So, before we check out any of the battlefields, we're actually going to go to the last stop on the tour, which is the Gettysburg National Cemetery. It's really close to the museum and visitor center. So, we thought, why not? All right, so Ed wanted me to clarify, we're not actually on a tour. They have what they call an auto tour with these different stops at different sites that you can do on your own. This is stop number 16, the cemetery. We're not going to do all 16 stops, we're just going to do a few.
This statue inscription says, Kentucky honors her son, Abraham Lincoln, who delivered his immortal address at this site, now marked by the Soldier's Monument. So this is the Gettysburg Battle Battlefield Tour map that the park ranger gave me. The visitor center and the museum is here. And then we went to 16, which is the Soldiers National Cemetery. We were trying to get to 15, but we're actually at 12, the Pennsylvania Memorial. So we're going to get out and look around this area. You can see it is huge. So honestly, we're kind of tired. This might be the only battlefield that we see. We might go into Gettysburg. I'm trying to talk Ed into that. So keep watching to see if I win. But let's get out and see the Pennsylvania Memorial. That's huge. It is really big. Valerie and I are pretty sure this is a battlefield. We don't know which one. This is why we research trips before we go. But unfortunately, this trip was planned so quick, we didn't have time to properly research. Here we are. So the moral behind me is for the Minnesota troops. It says in this one battle, they started the war with over a thousand men and 215 were killed, wounded, or captured. Well, that does it for a day here at Gettysburg. What would you think, babe? I thought it was awesome. Yep. We had no idea there was so much stuff. Um, Ed did win. We did not go into town. Honestly, we were both exhausted. Right. We were up at 430 and we couldn't do it. Um, but we might come back on another day. I think I fit it in later in the trip. So fingers crossed for that. Um, it was a lot of fun. The museum was huge. Mm -hmm. You could spend a couple hours there. Mm -hmm. We only did a couple stops on the tour, but there were 16. A pro tip. Start at number one. Yes. That's going to make the route make sense. You'll see the signs. The audio makes sense. We just kind of tried to hit and miss and it didn't work out so well. But what we saw was cool. We wanted to give you guys a taste of Gettysburg. We knew we weren't going to see all of it, right. but I really liked it. And as always, thanks for watching our videos and we'll see you on the next adventure. Bye.